Hello and welcome to this episode of HRTV, your all-access pass to all things hearing. Today's episode is brought to you by the Audity Group, the preeminent group of hearing care providers in North America. I'm John Doherty. First up today, the 2010 sales figures are in for the U.S. hearing aid industry. According to Hearing Industries Association, 2.69 million hearing aid units were dispensed during 2010. This is a nearly 3% increase over 2009 sales. However, the Department of Veteran Affairs, which now makes up about 19% of the total U.S. market, had another busy year in dispensing aids. It provided more than 536,000 units, or an 11% increase over 2009. So if you adjust for these units, sales from the private sector increased by only 1% in 2010. The HIA statistics also indicate that BTEs now constitute two-thirds of the market. That's up about 5% from 2009. The military is gung-ho about hearing following a new report that found its hearing conservation program lacking. The report from the United States Government Accountability Office reveals the Department of Defense needs to improve its hearing program on several levels. It found while each of the armed services tries to minimize hazardous noise, there are inconsistencies in hearing protection strategies and limited training on how to properly do it. Problems include the once-a-year reviews of high noise locations like flight decks or firing ranges because they do not accurately assess soldier exposure. Another issue, service members admit hearing protection is not consistently used as it often interferes with communication needs. And while annual hearing-related training is required for at-risk service members, the soldiers say this training is often ill-timed and it is not properly tracked. Finally, audiologists and other key stakeholders rarely share hearing loss data across all military branches. To solve these problems, the DOD plans to address the type, timing, and tracking of training, develop an appropriate set of performance indicators, improve the process of collecting and using data, and examine reviews to identify opportunities for program improvement. The DOD also has a plan for a hearing center of excellence, but Congress has not set an implementation date. The X Factor. It's that something extra you get when working for an Audigy certified practice. You'll have a career, not just a job. You'll receive support from an expert team of experienced professionals, investment in your continuing education and professional growth, and access to state-of-the-art practice platforms and cutting-edge technology. Realize your personal, professional, and financial goals. Visit Audigy Group at the Audiology Now Conference. It is in Chicago, April 6th through the 9th. Find them at booth 1035. Discover the power the X Factor has in store for you. The heated debate on the overuse of antibiotics gets a bit hotter. The latest NIH-funded research published in the New England Journal of Medicine has new evidence that the best treatment for toddlers with middle ear infections is still antibiotics. Right now, most American children with middle ear infections are treated with antibiotics, but with those who exhibit mild symptoms, doctors will take a watchful waiting stance. But in many European countries, doctors follow the strategy of watchful waiting for nearly all middle ear infections. In the NEJM study, investigators randomly assigned about 300 children under the age of two to either receive amoxicillin or a placebo for 10 days. The study found the children in the treatment group had a significant reduction in both severity and duration of their symptoms compared with the placebo group. For a look at the complete study, visit hearingreview.com. If you're not getting enough sleep at night, it may be because it's too loud at work. The journal Sleep recently published a study in which researchers at Ben-Gurion University in Israel compared employees from the same workplace, those with occupational-related hearing loss, and those without. They looked at various elements of sleep, like difficulty falling asleep, waking during the night, excessive daytime sleepiness, snoring, and excessive sleep movement. The study found that, although tinnitus was reported to be the main sleep disrupting factor, harmful noise contributed to insomnia, regardless of age and years of exposure. The Hear the World Foundation is now accepting project submissions for 2011. Last year, the Charitable Foundation contributed more than $200,000 in support to global projects for people with hearing loss. Phonak set up the foundation and is now looking to fund projects that address hearing loss challenges in developing countries. When selecting projects, Hear the World places a strong emphasis on sustainability. This means that, in addition to providing hearing instruments and fittings, there are regular checkups by audiologists, 
a guarantee of batteries, and speech therapy for children. Valentin Shapiro is the president of the Hear the World Foundation and CEO of Phonak. He says the commitment of the foundation is to give children in developing countries affected by hearing loss the chance to have a worthwhile future. Here's a look at the guidelines for 2011 proposals. It must deal with the issue of hearing loss or contribute toward its prevention or work to dispel the stigma of hearing loss or offer concrete support to people and families affected by hearing loss. The submission period is open until April 30th. More details are available online. That's all we have for this episode. Thanks for tuning in to this broadcast of Hearing Review TV brought to you by the Audity Group. We'll see you next time.